How are you doing? I am so excited that you are with me tonight. My name is Cody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. We are here and we are talking about unstuck. You know, like unstuck. You know when you eat a candy cane? Yeah, you're becoming sticky. You know, and I tried to eat one earlier and like sticks. But we're not talking about sticky candy canes on being unstuck. We are talking about God's promise of helping us out of any sticky situations. Everybody gets in a sticky situation. Life is hard, gets confusing. Situations happen, we're stuck up in home. We can't visit with our friends. Those are all sticky situations, but God is with us and God will help us get unstuck. Oh, I'm back. I had to get unstuck from that sticky candy cane. That just reminds me of our life app this month. We are talking this whole month about determination, determining that it's worth finishing what we started. And we have a verse to go along with that. And it's in Galatians 6, 9. This is our verse of the month. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So that's Galatians 6, 9. Let's read that again. Everybody we needs to stand up in the room because this is our verse of the month. And we're hoping that you're memorizing this and it's holding straight to your heart. And the verse again, Galatians 6, 9, repeat after me. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now that verse, that's very, very important to remember in your heart. When we're not, we're not talking about just farmers reaping the harvest. We're talking about anything that you set out to do in your life, that's what you're harvesting. You're harvesting those successes. So if you don't give up, you have that determination to keep going, no matter how hard it becomes, have faith in God, the Holy Spirit is with you, and you're gonna reap the harvest. And that's what we're talking about this month in Unstuck, because God is with us. Now, let's turn to Haley. I hope everybody remembers Haley. Haley has a great lesson for us today. Let's tune into Haley and see what she has to say. Hey everybody, Haley here. Now, I don't wanna burst my own bubble, but today is gonna to get sticky. See? <laughs> I have always been amazed at people who can create art out of unexpected objects. So today, I've decided to give it a go myself. <laughs> and guess what my unexpected object is? <laughs> Ta-da! That's right, bubble gum. I've been working hard all morning getting it ready. Whew, I am sure glad I am done with that part. Well, here goes nothing. <sighs> Oh, oh, wow, this is stickier than I expected. <laughs> I figure if I'm gonna be creating sculptures, I should start with one of the most famous monuments, the Arc de Triomphe in France. Oh, oh, oui, oui, mademoiselle, le poisson, <laughs> le fromage. <laughs> I mean, really get into it. Right now it looks like a brain, but we'll get there. Sometimes situations in life can also turn out to be stickier than we expect. And when that happens, it's helpful to have determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, Jesus' disciples were determined to carry out the mission he had given them. But before they could begin, they were supposed to wait. Let's see what they were waiting for and what happened next. That's just never gonna be a hand. It never will. Enjoy the story! <laughs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, Chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The room was crowded 
over 100 followers of Jesus gathered, sat on the floor or knelt to pray. Peter, always quick to take charge, may have led them. Lord, you told us to wait in Jerusalem. You promised to send your Holy Spirit. Now, just before Jesus had gathered his closest friends at the Mount of Olives and instructed them to tell everyone about him from Jerusalem to every nation on earth. But then, right before their eyes, he had been taken up to heaven. You've given us a huge job. We don't know how to do it when you're not here with us. So please, help us. The room stilled as everyone waited, even though they weren't exactly sure what they were waiting for. James and John may have been near a window. Getting windy out there. I'll just close the shutters. I don't think that sound is outside. Uh, uh, everyone, stay calm. As the sound, like wind, rose even higher, a burst of light appeared in the center of the room. It flickered like a fireball, breaking into individual flames. <gasps> what on earth? I don't think it's from Earth. As the group watched, transfixed, the flames separated and skimmed out until a tongue of fire stood over the head of each believer in the room. Is this? It must be. God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God filled the room and the heart of each believer, something even more incredible happened. Soon, the believers realized what was going on. God has given us the power to speak other languages. Immediately, the believers went out to join the crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Now, these Jews traveled to Jerusalem from many regions and countries where a variety of languages were spoken, so they were shocked to hear the believers talking about Jesus in words they could understand, and each believer responded in their own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? Yes, so how do we hear them in our own native languages? We've come from all over. I've met people here from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Asia, Egypt, Libya. But these Galileans are talking about God's wonders in our languages. What does it mean? I think it means they're a little loopy. Loopy? One fish short of a lunch, if you know what I mean. Peter heard the doubters in the crowd, so he gathered the rest of the disciples and made his way up to the very front. My fellow Jews, hey, people! Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over. You nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The crowd listened as the Holy Spirit gave Peter the words to say and helped them understand. Jesus has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. This is what God had promised. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now see and hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Many people were deeply moved by the words Peter had spoken. So what do we do now? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to be baptized. Me too. Me three. Then let's get started. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples were already beginning the big job of telling every nation on earth about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem. Awesome story. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus. They began to follow Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and John were able to begin their big job, and that was to tell everyone about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem. Jesus told his disciples that a helper would come to them, and that happened. The believers had the gift of the Holy Spirit to help them. They knew that they were never going to be alone. And that reminds me of a great point for our story. God gives us what we need to keep going. Now I need everybody to stand up and help me with this because as usual we have some motions. So we'll, for God we're going to do this, this is what we normally do. Gave 
you what you need to keep going. Okay, so everybody got that? All right, let's try this again. So everybody stand up. It's God will give you what you need to keep going. And that's our, our final point, our main point for tonight. We're gonna check in to Haley and she's gonna sum up for us. Stay tuned for Haley right now. John, I told you having the Holy Spirit would be so helpful. Well, yeah, Peter, I know so many different languages now. Hola, bonjour, salam. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. I know you're excited, but please. Oh, hi. Um, I was just finishing my school thing. Arc de Trump. <laughs> Wasn't today's story just awesome? I love how God's Holy Spirit gives us just what we need. He certainly gave the disciples what they needed. God has always had a plan to send a helper. In the Old Testament, people had to go to the temple in order to be near God's presence, and they weren't allowed to be directly next to him. But then, Jesus came on the scene. Yes! He made the way for us to have a direct relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Once they received the Holy Spirit, the mission of Jesus began to happen, but the disciples could have never done on their own, they were able to do by the power of God's Spirit. And God knew that. He knew that we would need help, so he gave us the Spirit. We don't have to rely on ourselves. Whew. Talk about taking the pressure off. When you believe and put your faith in Jesus, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yay! I love gifts. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit doesn't just help us to accomplish impossible tasks. He is also there to help us and comfort us through difficult times in our lives. Maybe you know of someone who's gone through something tough, like having to move far away from friends or having to get a tooth pulled at the dentist, which I might have to do after this. And maybe you heard that person say, I couldn't have done it without God's help. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to go through things alone. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. That's the one thing to remember today. God gives you what you need to keep going. So whatever's on your plate today, whether it's something hard or easy, or perhaps just a lot of chewed gum that you're not sure what to do with, I hope you have an amazing day. See you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Oh wait, no. No, that's the wrong one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.
Haley is awesome, isn't she? And she has so many great points for us. And I just hope that you will treasure what you learned into your hearts tonight. And it's going to help you. It's going to help you get unstuck. God is with you. The Holy Spirit's with you. Okay. They are going to help you get unstuck from any situation. And it's been a pleasure with you tonight. We are we pray for James that he's back with us next Wednesday night live. But until then, we wish you a good night. We miss you and love you. <laughs>